Hey guys, it's Samuel here from How to Have a Q, and today I'm going to show you how you can connect your Raspberry Pi in complete headless mode. No need for keyboards, monitors, or mice at all. Nothing. This you can do straight out of the box, no need to connect to any monitors at all. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, I'm just assuming you already have the latest version of Raspbian installed, or a version of Raspbian installed, and you should just be able to plug it in and go to your files, and go to the file normally called boot, as, as I'm showing on the screen right now. Okay, so we're just simply going to make a new file. Uh, text document is the easiest way of doing it. And this one's going to be called WPA underscore sup dot conf. So now we've made that file. Let's edit it. Okay, so we're simply going to. I'm going I'm to copy and paste an example of what it should look like. So here it is. So um, you want to make sure there's no spaces between any of the equal signs. And one of the key things you have to make sure is there's no like invalid spaces. Here there is actually a, a tab. So you can press tab to get that space there. And we need it to be exactly like this. Enter in your SSID here. Uh, your SSID is this. Do you know when you um, log on to your phone and you click the Wi-Fi? It will say like BT Hub so and so. That's your SSID, the name of your Wi-Fi connection. And the password is obviously just the password that you use to log on to the Wi-Fi. And this uh, this is your key MGMT. So it's generally a WPA-PSK. If you don't understand this, best just to Google it. Or you can check your, on your phone, you can check your Wi-Fi and it will probably say something similar to this. And that's what you should write down. But this is the best bet, just go for this. So enter in your password here and your SSID here. Okay, and now we're going to make a file called SSH. Okay, so now that's all done, let's just eject it and plug it into a Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Okay. So the first program we're going to be needing is called Advanced LAN Scanner. And this program will allow us to see the IP address of the Raspberry Pi when it's connected on the network. And it's pretty easy to install. As you can see, I've just downloaded it here. It's basically just a series of clicking next and agreeing to the terms and conditions. And then you'll be on your way. Okay. And you can see if we search here, it's at the top and it's been installed and we can open it up. And we'll be using this later in order to connect and find the Raspberry Pi's IP address. But for now, we don't need this. So, now we're going to use this thing called Putty in order to do the SSH connection. Now this is a standard open source tool that uh, pretty much everybody in Linux uses to connect to uh, Linux distributions and even Raspberry Pi's as well. So we can just go to the first link, uh, or Raspberry Pi SSH, and we can just download it. Um, and we want to download a particular version. If you click download here at the top, and if you go, we should download uh, the top one where it says SSH and tail client access. That one, tail client itself. There we go. Click that. We can open it, and we can run. And you can see here that we have Putty now. But now we're going to download something called Real VNC. Just type in VNC Viewer, hit enter, and you'll see this is the top one, Real VNC. And we can just download it. And this is going to be so awesome to use because it's going to actually allow us to connect to the Raspberry Pi screen. A bit like TeamViewer, if you've heard of that. It's a bit like that, but for uh, Linux. And we can just click Run, and you'll see it pop up. And you can see I have something already set up here, but we're going to set this up in a minute once our Raspberry Pi has booted. And yeah, the first thing we're going to have to do, of course, is going to be to find our IP address and LAN scanner for that. So let's just bring that up now. Here it is. And we can actually just use this to find the IP address and click scan. Now it could be this one, which is, has a, a blank section here. It doesn't have a manufacturer. It really depends on the chipset of your US of your USB um, of your USB dongle for Wi-Fi. Or if you have it on board, then it should say Raspberry Pi as the manufacturer. Um, so yeah, we can just click run and we can open Putty. And I've worked out that my IP address is 192.168.10.115. And we can click open. And now it will ask us to log in. And we can just put Pi as the login. And this is just the standard login for Raspberry Pis. And we can just hit enter after this. And enter the password which is raspberry that's the standard raspberry password unless you set something else of course and now we have access to the raspberry pi terminally um, so now we can enter in sudo raspberry config sudo raspberry config 
and hit enter. But now we can just go down to interfacing options with the arrow keys and hit enter when we get there and then go to VNC and hit enter and then click yes we would like the kit to be enabled and hit enter and hit enter again and then we can just cross because we've actually finished with with putty now and we can close the session and now we can open up the real VNC so we type in VNC viewer and now we enter in the IP address because we've now enabled VNC so we should be able to connect to it and yep that's what we're going to enter and connect to it and we'll change Samuel for Pi like we did in Putty and we'll change this to Raspberry as the password and you can set it to remember the password but you don't have to do that click OK and now we should be able to get a connection and you can see we now have access to the Raspberry Pi which is pretty awesome so thanks guys for watching this video be sure to subscribe like this video I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video guys goodbye if you are interested in watching more videos about Raspberry Pi I made a video about how to make an Amazon Echo out of a Raspberry Pi. Click here to watch it. Goodbye.